We put out a call for nominations and, and people from communities all over the world, Brooklyn, New York, Davis, California, Kenya, um, Philippines, South Africa, um, all over South America, these um, applications were coming in of these women who saw that this was needed and wanted to be a part of designing something that would support them and support the women that they worked with and worked alongside. And so uh, we met in Mexico City we gathered 30 women who had been nominated as community leaders, as women who were really on the forefront of these issues and wanted to create something that would take us all to the next level. And they got on their planes, and they got off their planes, and they walked into the door one by one in their beautiful different outfits and their suitcases or their beautiful bags. And we stood around in a circle and we looked at each other and we were seeing reflections of each other in that room. So many different walks of life, so many different challenges and a shared vision for something that could arise if we could put our collective genius together. And so we designed for several days the framework of what Women's Earth Alliance is today. We designed, we talked about the communication and the information challenges and, and gaps that were, that existed, that were hindering our work. Uh, we talked about some of the forums, some of the ways that we could sh exchange best practices and we designed the programs that Women's Earth Alliance actually runs today. We designed the principles and the values that this organization lives and breathes by. And that was the, the, the beginnings of this organization. And today, Women's Earth Alliance um, grew, and it grew, and it grew, and it's now in the hundreds. And it's, um, it's, it's all of us. It's, it's women and men from all over the world who are standing for the strength and the support of women who are working to take care of our communities and take care of our Earth. And it's just an exquisite tapestry of people who have come together to see things in a new light, to see things with hope, and to start designing together the solutions. So some of the things that we work on, um, I don't know if you've met Shannon yet, but Shannon is the coordinator for our transformative advocacy program, which is one of the programs that Women's Earth Alliance runs. And transformative advocacy convenes women professionals with grassroots women activists around a specific stated need. So we were just in Bolivia and we brought a group of women attorneys to work in partnership with women who are working on sustainable agriculture issues. And those women are still working together today. Um, and when we can't be face to face, we have an we have an online forum where, where people can share resources and best practices and, and tell each other what's working and what's not, share resources of, of, of financial resources or um, skill sets and, and different types of solutions that are being generated in different parts of the world. And then, of course, there's our Women in Water program. And this is um, really a direct request from the women, our women colleagues in Africa who said we need solutions around water and we need it now. You know, as you know, um, Africa faces some of the most devastating and acute water challenges in the world. And unfortunately, those challenges really rest on the shoulders of women. Um, and I have seen the way when women um, don't have the resources or the technology that they need, how it steals their future. You know, I've met those women who, who don't have an opportunity to create the life that they dream because of the ac challenge of, of accessing water. You know, I have heard the terrible stories of women who have to walk a long way and are raped. And there's hundreds and hundreds of women around the world who are facing violence and rape because they're, they need to get water. Um, you know, I have seen the way that um, communities deteriorate and, and, and come across so much challenge when their women, when their water keepers aren't able to do their job, um, the way that ripples out into the whole community. You know, I have felt what 45 pounds, that's the limit of taking a, ca a baggage onto a plane, feels on your head, especially after three hours of walking. Um, and you know, and the other thing that I have seen are the well-intentioned development projects that attempt to take care of these issues, but really kind of place a blueprint solution down in a community without really listening to what the community needs and, and what is appropriate and who might be affected and how to design it. And I've watched those fail too. And so the Women in Water program is an attempt, and I think a really, really powerful attempt to shift that, to put the the, the tools and the power in the hands of the women who are doing the work day in and day out.